Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through five really useful and simple tips you can use to improve your writing and subsequently get a better score on the production subscore of the Duolingo English test. But before I start that, if you think this type of video is useful, please write yes below in the comments and hit that like button. So the first tip is really easy and it is to stop using the word very all the time. Now, I read students' answers every single day on my Facebook group and really often I see the word very plus an adjective. For example, very big, very expensive, very beautiful. Now, of course, this is not wrong, but on the Duolingo English test scoring criteria, it does state that they are looking for your lexical sophistication and lexical diversity. So what does that mean? Well, lexical simply means vocabulary. So lexical sophistication means what type of word you're using. Are you using very easy words or more difficult and specific words? And diversity means variety. Are you also using a variety of different words? So if you are using the word very with a simple adjective all the time, you're going to score kind of low on the vocabulary section. So what can you do? Well, you should use more specific vocabulary. So let's learn some more adjectives. Well, actually, I have a task for you. I'm going to show you some different words using the word very, like very big, very beautiful, very important. And I want you to think of a more specific adjective to replace it. I'll give you 20 seconds to do this, but if you need more time, just pause the video. Okay then, so here are some of the answers. There are, of course, other answers. English has a huge vocabulary, but these are some of the more common synonyms for each of these very examples. You can read these by yourself, just pause the video and read it, or you can download the PDF file I am using here when you become a member of my channel. There is a link to that below. So here you can see that you can replace very plus the simple adjective with much more sophisticated adjectives. By doing this well, and of course correctly, you will get a better score for lexical sophistication on the Duolingo English test. Okay guys, just before we go on to tip number two, I want to let you know that I do have some writing courses available for you now. These are courses specifically made for the two writing tasks on the Duolingo English test. So the write about a photo and write about a topic question types. If you want to take those courses, the links are below in the description. Tip number two is really similar to number one, but it's to do with verbs. Too often, students use very simple verbs when they're writing their answers. They're not necessarily incorrect for the situation, but it's a bit too casual or informal for academic writing. Just like with the adjectives I showed you in tip number one, English has lots and lots of very specific verbs you can use for different situations. And it's better to use those specific verbs than more general ones like to be, get, or have. So let's study some of these more specific verbs. Again, I've made a little task for you. I've written five sentences with very basic verbs. I want you to read them and change the verbs which are in green to something a lot more specific and more formal or more academic. For this one, I'll give you 30 seconds, but if you need more time, just pause the video. Okay, so here are my answers. Number one, we can change it to she traveled to India for vacation, or you can say she visited. The be verb, she went to India for vacation, is not wrong. But again, remember, we want to show more sophistication and diversity in our language. So whenever possible, we should try to use more specific words. Number two, 
A good manager knows how to delegate work to employees. To delegate means the same as to give, but it's much more formal and much more appropriate for this type of situation. In a formal way, we can say a boss or a manager delegates work to people. Whereas something like your mother, she will give you work. So the situation you're talking about really matters here. Okay, number three, I'm hoping to receive an offer from Cambridge. In this sentence, get is not wrong at all, but it's a bit informal. Receive is a much more formal word you can use. Four, nowadays people often discuss or debate the environment. For the same reasons, discuss or debate something is the same as talking about something, but discuss or debate are much more academic. Quick note, we don't discuss about something, we just discuss something, but we do talk about it. This is called collocation, it's about what words go with other words. That's just a common mistake I hear a lot, so be careful with that. 5. Cars produce more pollution than buses and trains. Of course, produce is much more specific than make. Make is a very general verb. Tip number three, don't use contractions when you're writing. What's a contraction? It's when two or more words join together and get shortened. For example, do not becomes don't. I am, I'm, he has, he's. When we're speaking, even in an academic situation, we do use these very naturally. But when we're writing academically or formally, we don't use these types of contractions. So just simply write the full form. I am, do not, he has, etc, etc. Also, one more thing, make sure you never write gonna or wanna in academic or any type of formal writing. It's totally okay to use that when you're speaking or when you're writing something casual, but not in any type of formal writing, and definitely not on the Duolingo English test. Tip number four is to be careful with your spelling. So by far, one of the most common questions I get asked is, can I use Grammarly when I'm taking the Duolingo English test? And unfortunately, the answer is simply no, you can't use Grammarly. Nowadays, we all, including myself, we rely very heavily on different software to help check our spelling mistakes. But when you take the Duolingo English test, you have to just rely on your English spelling skills. Spelling in English can be quite difficult, and there are lots of common mistakes students make. I'm a teacher, so I see these really often. So just quickly for this video, I've made another task for you. I have written five sentences. Each of them include one spelling mistake. The word that's spelled wrong is in green. Your job is to read it and correct the spelling. These are five of the most common words I see spelled wrong by English learners like yourself. So I think this task will help you. You have 20 seconds to do this, but of course you can pause the video. And here is the correct answer. Until only has one L. So until has just one L, but till has two. That's why it's confusing. But remember, if you write until, always just use one L. Second one, you should change it to just one O. Three and four are very confusing. So heavy pollution can affect people's health, affect with an A, and number four, the effects of pollution on people's health is worrying. Okay, so these two are really common mistakes because the pronunciation is the same, but the spelling is different and actually they have a slightly different meaning. So affect with an A is a verb and it basically means change or alter. And the key point is that it is a verb. So if you're writing a sentence and you're not sure which spelling to use, if it's the verb form, use A, affect. Effect with an E is a noun. So the noun form takes the E spelling. This word normally comes after an article. So something like the effects or an effect of something. But fundamentally, you just need to know that if it's a verb, it's spelled with an A, effect. And if it's a noun, it's spelled with an E, effect. And five, it is important to work hard every day to achieve your goals. In this sentence, every day should be two words. 
So every day with two words basically means each day. So you should work hard every day. You should work hard each day. Every day as one word is actually an adjective and it means something that's routine or normal. For example, I could say, these are my everyday shoes. Basically, that means these are the shoes that I wear normally. They are not special at all. But simply, you need to know that if you're talking about each day, then you should use a space every day. And tip number five is to be careful with uncountable nouns. English basically has two main types of nouns. We have countable and uncountable. Countable nouns are very easy. Basically, if you can see things and you're able to count them, then they are countable. For example, one, two, three. I have three pens. With countable nouns, we can include a number, like three, and we should include the S at the end of the noun. However, uncountable nouns are a bit more complicated. These are nouns which cannot be counted. So water is an easy example. You can't count water, so it's an uncountable noun. What about the noun information? Can you count information? Well, no, you can't, so it's also an uncountable noun. Some simple rules for uncountable nouns. We don't use a number. We don't add S at the end. That's simple, I'm sure you all know those basic rules. But what becomes difficult is choosing, is this noun un uncountable or countable? Because sometimes it is a bit tricky. And many students make mistakes with these countable nouns. So to help you, I've prepared a list of 16 really common nouns which are uncountable, but they are mistakes students make because many students write these nouns in the countable form. So here's the list. Okay, all of these words are typically uncountable. So remember, do not use a number with them and don't write S at the end. Okay, like I said, these are the nouns which I see my students make mistakes with a lot because they use them in the countable form, which is wrong. These are uncountable nouns. If you want to download the PDF I'm using here, you can when you become a member of my channel. There is a link below in the description. But don't go away. If you need to improve your writing more, I recommend you watch this video here or this one here. I've also made writing courses. They are linked below in the description. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.